Hello dear students. In today's class, we will try to understand the basics of rotational mechanics. So to begin with, let us try to understand what is a rigid body. The definition goes like this. A rigid body is a body whose particles preserve their relative positions when an external force or torque is applied on it. So note the word relative positions. So a hard rock or a solid crystal bat can be considered to be a rigid body. There are also systems of rigid bodies that is formed by connecting a number of rigid bodies together. So there are also non-rigid bodies. Non-rigid bodies are those which will be deformed when we apply force. And simply a rigid body are those body which would not undergo deformation when we apply force. So here for rigid body, it does not have deformation when we apply force. Whereas on the other hand, a non-rigid body would be deformed when we apply, apply force. A fishing pole or a human body is an example of non-rigid body. So as you can see, if you, to, if you take two points on this body, the distance between them will be different when we apply different forces on it. So as the stick bends, the distance between these points will be different and so on. Whereas in the case of a rigid body, the relative position of two arbitrary points on this body will always be a constant irrespective of the force that we apply on this body. Now these bodies, rigid bodies, basically they can execute translational and rotational motion. There are also spin motions. We are not going to look into that. So a translational motion is a motion in which the body executes linear movement. All the points inside the body will be moving linearly along a straight line when the body executes translational motion. Now coming to the rotational motion, in a rotational motion, the body will be executing circular motion. So when we say the body executes circular motion, we actually mean that all the points inside this body, if you trace the path of these, po these points, they will be moving along circular paths. Some of the points may not be moving. Those points which are sitting on the axis may not be moving. But all the other points will be executing circular motion in rotational motion. Now we have seen that all the points inside a rigid body will be making circular motion, circular paths when they execute rotational motion. And the centers of these circular motion will lie along a straight line in the case of the rotational motion of a rigid body. For example, if this hard sphere is rotating, all the points will be taking circular paths and those circular paths will have different radius. But the centers of these circular paths lie along a single line. At that line is called the axis of rotation of the rotation, rotational motion. So in this case, this straight line is the axis of rotation. Even for planar bodies, we can define an axis of rotation. And uh, you have seen this door. Uh, when we open the door, door is executing a partial rotational motion. It would not go a full circle, but it will rotate by a few angles. And what is the axis of rotation in the case of this door? The door rotates about its hinge. So this attached portion of the door near to the hinge actually forms the axis of rotation for the door. So can you find other examples of rotational motions of rigid bodies and try to define the axis of rotation of those rigid bodies. What are the other examples of rotational motion of rigid bodies? Now let us define some key physical terms related to the rotational moment. First is the angular displacement. Just like the linear displacement that we have seen, angular displacement is the displacement corresponding to rotational motion. So in this case, since they are moving in circular paths, we know they will be moving along angles. All the points inside the rigid body will be moving 
by angles. So that is why we define angular displacement in the case of rigid bodies undergoing rotational motion. So consider this planar body, this is a plane and this plane is executing circular motion about this z axis and this plane is lying along this x and y axis and consider one particular point here called A and what will happen to this point A as this body executes rotational motion. This point A will be going along circles about this axis of rotation which is this axis and as this point A moves, A is at a radius of r from this center from the axis of rotation and initially suppose this position was here, the position of A was here and as the body moves the particle at the point A traces a circular path and reaches the point A dash. So this angle traced by this radius OA in a unit time is defined as the angular displacement. We use the notation theta to denote the angular displacement and this theta is a vector and the direction of this vector is along this axis of rotation and its direction it could be either along the plus z direction or along the minus z direction right. So in order to determine the direction of the angular displacement we have the right hand screw rule which is the same as the right hand grip rule. So hold your hand in such a way that your four fingers the index finger, middle finger, the little finger and the ring finger traces the path of the circular motion. So the direction of the circular motion or the rotational motion and your di di direction of these fingers should be the same and in that case the direction of the thumb will give you the direction of the angular displacement. So angular displacement theta is a vector and its direction is is found by the rule of the right hand screw rule. Now the unit of this angular displacement is radian. So I hope most of these concepts related to angular displacement are clear for you. Clear for you. And as the point A executes angular displacement, it is also actually moving along a path and the distance traveled by the particle at the point A or at any point is given by S is equal to R theta, where R is the radius of this part of the particle considered from the origin. So suppose if we take a particle at this point, consider the radius of the particle from this origin O that is R, consider its angular displacement theta. So that much distance will be moved along the arc by this particle as, the part, as this body executes rotational motion. Now coming to the second important concept related to rotational mechanics, angular velocity. And angular velocity is defined as the rate of change of angular displacement with time. So I could define omega is equal to delta theta divided by delta t. So suppose the particle, the particle at one particular point is moving by an angle delta theta in a time delta t, then the average angular velocity can be defined using this expression and to find the instantaneous angular velocity we take the limit of delta t tending to 0. So that gives delta theta by delta t which is d theta by dt. So this defines the angular velocity as the rate of change of angular displacement per unit time. Now in terms of S, yes, we have already have an equation S is equal to R theta. If you differentiate, we have ds by dt is equal to R into d theta by dt, which implies that ds by dt is nothing but the linear velocity, right? When the particle is moving along the circles, it is al also tracing a linear path and it will have a linear velocity at any instant. So this implies that the linear velocity and the angular velocity are 
are, are related by the expression v equal to r omega. Linear velocity is equal to radius multiplied by angular velocity. Now coming to the third important concept related to rotational mechanics, angular acceleration. It is defined as the rate of change of angular velocity with time that is alpha is equal to delta omega divided by delta t. So suppose the angular velocity of this rotating body is itself changing with time and suppose omega 2 is the angular velocity at time t2 and omega 1 is the angular velocity at time t1 and this time difference is delta t. So this change in angular velocity with respect to time corresponds to angular acceleration that is given by this change in angular velocity divided by the change in time which is delta omega by delta t. To find the instantaneous angular velocity, sorry angular acceleration, we take the limit of time delta t tending to 0, delta omega by delta t which is nothing but d omega by dt or which is also d square theta by dt square. So the, these equations are much similar to the equations of linear motion that we have already learned. Try to compare linear motion and angular motion by comparing the concepts of linear displacement, velocity and acceleration as well as angular displacement, velocity and acceleration. Now the SI unit of angular acceleration is radian per second square. Now what is the SI unit of angular velocity? So it is clear that delta theta by delta t will be radian per second. Radian per second square is the SI unit of angular acceleration. And just like angular displacement, angular velocity and ang angular acceleration both are vectors. The direction is the same as that of angular displacement. Angular displacement theta, angular velocity and angular acceleration all lies along the same direction and you can find the direction by using the right hand screw rule or the right hand grip rule. I hope these portions are clear for you. Try to understand more about rotational basics of rotational mechanics by reading your text. Thank you.